Hi, this is Dave Farina from CosmosSafari.com. Have you ever wondered how to find M33, the Triangulum Galaxy? In today's episode of our Deep Sky with Dave Messier Marathon series, I will walk you through my four-step method for finding this amazing autumn celestial wonder. This video is brought to you in part by OPT Telescopes, a world leader in telescopes and accessories. Click my affiliate link in the description below to help support Cosmos Safari's mission to bring the universe closer than you think. M33, the Triangulum Galaxy, is the third largest member of the local group of galaxies behind the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies. At 2.73 million light years away, M33 is one of the most distant objects visible to the naked eye, and is potentially a satellite galaxy of the larger M31 Andromeda Galaxy, and may have interacted with the Andromeda Galaxy gravitationally in the past. M33's name, Triangulum, is taken from the constellation which it lies, the Triangulum constellation, and was likely first discovered by Giovanna Battista Hodinera before 1654 but was rediscovered and cataloged by Charles Messier on August 25th through 26th, 1764, and published in his catalog of nebulae and star clusters in 1771. Later, William Herschel also cataloged this object on September 11th, 1784, as HV-17. The Triangulum Galaxy is actually home to many of Herschel's New General Catalog, or NGC, objects. The brightness and angular size of M33 makes it one of the largest and brightest galaxies in the entire sky. At an apparent angular size of 70.8 minutes by 41.7 minutes of arc, or 1.18 degrees by 0.695 degrees, it's over twice the width of the full moon. At a magnitude of 5.72, M33 is just bright enough to be observed with the naked eye from extremely dark skies. The object's brightness, however, is concentrated towards the central bulge, so viewing the object without the aid of a telescope will not result in much more than a pinprick-sized spot in the sky. The Triangulum is one of the best targets for binoculars and telescopes and should be viewed with relatively low magnification. As always, larger diameter optics will provide the best results by increasing the light gathering and resolving power. With this object, however, it's important to make sure that you keep the focal length of your optics low enough to see the entire object within your field of view. Due to the high sensitivity of cameras compared to the human eye, astrophotography can be conducted on this object even from light polluted areas, especially when combined with a light pollution filter. Hydrogen-2 narrowband filters can also be used in order to expose bright H2 emission nebulae within the galaxy's spiral arms. Step 1. Find a starting asterism or constellation. At my location in the northeast U.S., we will start our observation by locating the Great Square of Pegasus asterism as it rises in the eastern sky just after sunset, starting in late July through early August. The Great Square of Pegasus asterism is part of the constellation of Pegasus as well as Andromeda, and is made up of many of those constellations' brightest stars. Throughout the autumn, the Great Square will move westward as time progresses towards winter. However, due to the shortening of days and nighttime coming earlier each month, the Great Square remains in the evening sky throughout the fall and into the winter, and sets just after sunset in the western sky by early to mid-January. Step 2. Find the object using star hopping. We are going to use the stars of the Great Square of Pegasus to help us to find M33, the Triangulum Galaxy. Starting at the Great Square, we first need to identify some of the major component stars of this important asterism. The Great Square itself is made of four stars oriented in a nearly square shape. Three of these stars found in the constellation Perseus are Shi'at, Markab, and al -Janeb. The fourth star to complete the square, Alpha Rats, is actually part of the constellation of Andromeda, the Princess. 
In order to find M33, the Triangulum Galaxy, we will start at the top star of the Great Square, Shi'at, and draw an imaginary line through Alpha Rats. As we pass through Alpha Rats, the next brightest star we will encounter is Delta Andromedae, in the lower of the two legs of the Andromeda constellation. We will continue along the lower leg of Andromeda to the very bright middle star, Mirac. From Mirac, we will draw another imaginary line through Mu Andromedae, the middle star of the upper leg of Andromeda. Now that we've located Mu Andromedae, retrace the line back through and past Mirac, nearly twice as far as the angular distance between these two stars. You can use your hand as a basic measuring tool. The distance between these two stars should be slightly more than the width of three fingers held at arm's length. If you do not own a Telrad finder scope, move on to step three. If you do own a Telrad finder scope, you will notice that the distance between these two stars is about four degrees, approximately equal to the width of the Telrad's reticle. Move the reticle, causing Mirac to move from the eastern side of the reticle to the western side of your reticle. Move the reticle again so that you are approximately two times the width of the reticle along that imaginary line from Mirac. Either of these two methods should place M33 nicely in the field of view of your finder scope. Step three, move your eye to your magnified finder. At this point, you should have M33, the Triangulum Galaxy, in your magnified finder scope. In dark skies, M33 should be easily visible in a 50 millimeter or larger finder scope or binoculars. In extremely dark skies, it will even be visible with the naked eye. Center M33 in your finder scope. Step four, move your eye to your widest field eyepiece. Always start your observations at your widest field eyepiece. For this simulation, I've chosen my 100 degree apparent field of view Stellarview Optimus 20mm eyepiece on my Stellarview SVX 130T Premier Triplet Apochromatic Refractor. Center your object in the field of view and slowly work your way down to smaller and smaller focal length eyepieces, centering each one until you get the desired field of view for your setup. Short focal length telescopes and long focal length eyepieces work best on this object due to its very large angular size. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Deep Sky with Dave. This is part of my Messier Marathon series of videos in which I plan to go through all 110 Messier objects. If you find this video helpful, please consider liking this video and subscribe to the channel. And click the notification bell if you would like to find out each time I upload a new video. If you have a different method for finding M33, the Triangulum Galaxy, want to provide me with feedback on the video, have suggestions or requests for future videos, or if you have any questions regarding my star hopping techniques, observational astronomy, telescopes, or astrophotography, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you from Dave Farina here at CosmosSafari.com. Clear skies.